All right, 10 minutes later into this nitrogen pressure to pay test, and it has nearly stopped dropping because of the temperature difference that I told you about and that you should let your system rest 10 or 15 minutes before you stop your nitrogen pressure decay test because it'll make you think that you have a leak. And now here I am 10 minutes and 56 seconds and it looks like it dropped 0 0.9 or 8 PSI, but actually it hasn't. It has been slowing down really rapidly coming to an end. So it's just about at its end point. So if I were to rerun this test, the next 10 minutes, I probably wouldn't find more than a one tenth of a PSI drop because now the gas has been stabilized and coming to a rest where it's not gonna lose any more pressure. So this is what I explained in the first video. Do not run your nitrogen pressure decay test immediately after filling it up with uh, nitrogen because if the temperature is hotter, you will see this go positive 0.9 or more or less. And if it is cooler than your tank of gas, you'll see it go a few tenths down. Now, if you have a big leak, it'll just keep on going. It won't do this graph. So what happens is the leak starts and it goes down, 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 and it doesn't stop. That's a leak. It just keeps on going at the same rate, at the same speed, in the same angle of attack. If you look at it on a graph, it's very linear. But if it's not a leak, usually what you'll see on your graph is it'll go down, down, down as the gas is getting colder. And then once your warm gas you put in starts warming up, you'll see the bell curve come on there and you'll see it start to steady out. And then the amount that it drops starts steadying up and then it'll come to a flat rate and it'll just flatline and it won't go down no more. That is the difference between a temperature difference in your testing gas and not. And that's why you don't use CO2. CO2 is extremely sensitive to even one degree change in temperature and CO2 is a great amount of pressure difference. This is why you don't do a nitrogen pressure decay test with CO2. Um, if you're gonna use the purple squirty stuff and you're looking for leaks using that one company's product that says put CO2 in there and squirt red shit all over the place. Well, it's not red when it hits, it turns pink when it sees CO2 then you would use CO2, but you would not use CO2 for a standing pressure decay test. Not only that, in the presence of moisture, CO2 ingrained into the oil and moisture makes carbonic acid on top of the other acids the moisture and refrigerant will make anyway. And very few guys vacuum test long enough to take it, uh, vacuum long enough to take it all out. Just another problem with CO2. CO2 is great when it's used in its application and properly. When it's not used properly, it could cause more harm than you uh, can do. Uh, especially, well, I won't get into that. That's, that's another subject about CO2. All right, guys, you see the slowdown, right? You see we're in the 13 minutes and we've just barely moved at all now. So now I would start taking my test because from the first video I said 10 or 15 minutes. Now you start taking your test. All right, see ya. I hope you understood this and you caught something out of this.